<laughs> oh, good morning, everybody. All right. Uh, my name, I am Reverend Michael Everett Davis. Uh, I am ordained as an interfaith minister uh, and from One Spirit Interfaith Seminary. And I am serving as spiritual director here at Unity of Indianapolis under special dispensation with World, Unity Worldwide Ministries as I continue studies toward a Unity ordination. A lot's happened this morning. We've done a lot of singing, some praying, some meditation, uh, and there's this message that God is within. God is within me. God is where we show up. When we focus on our divinity within ourselves and the divinity within others. So we're wrapping up this first month of 2024. We started off the end of the year as we released what no longer served us through the burning bowl ceremony. We, we accepted a new name in the white stone ceremony. We have a new annual theme, Building Community. Last year, our annual theme was a year of possibilities. We affirmed each month something different about, about it being possible. And even the year before that, it was a year of worthiness where we affirmed our worthiness. We are worthy of love. We are worthy of, of what, we, what we receive. And a part of my, the vow that I took as a minister with one, through One Spirit, a part of my vow is to accept others as they are, including myself. And I bring that up because sometimes that's the hard part. Sometimes that's that hard part of, that, of accepting ourselves of who we are, who we truly are, and that is a child of God. And sometimes it's hard to know where we fit in the big picture of the world. So I'm going to talk about that, I think. I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth this morning, uh, because part of my talk was I was going to be reading from a book by H. Emily Cady, and I realized that I didn't bring it. <laughs> so, um, so it's meant to be, I'm supposed to share my thoughts not H. Emily Cady. Um, but today's daily word was free. At the end, it quotes 1 Peter 2, 16, as servants of God live as free people, yet do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. So, of course, um, I had to look at what surrounded that verse. I don't like taking just one verse out and what, is it, what, is, what does that mean out of context. So I wanted to look at the whole thing. But before, and I'm going to read, it's uh, 1 Peter 11 through 17. And before I read that, um, it's the book of Peter. And Peter represents our faith. So I want you to think of this as coming from your faith. It's a letter from your faith to you. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that though they, may, though they malign you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he comes to judge. For the Lord's sake, accept the authority of every human institution, whether of the emperor as supreme or of governors as sent to him to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing right you should silence the ignorant of the foolish. As servants of God, live as free people, yet do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. Honor everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Okay. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Believe. Okay, this is some heavy-handed stuff that... When we look at it on the surface, it's basically saying um, for those that were following Jesus, um, when you're around the muggles, behaviors, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like, 
You can do your magic, but don't let them see you do it. Okay? If we're talking about Harry Potter. So, do, but obey their rules. Okay? That way you don't pull attention to yourself, whatever. When we look at this section metaphysically, what is it saying? So here's a basic, here's what this would mean. We who are spiritually enlightened and follow a higher power must also obey the laws of the world. We can live in the world, but not of the world. When we live our lives from love, as love, there is no need to cause conflict. And from truthunity.net, it says, Jesus made himself subject to the law of the land. He paid taxes and so forth, yet he knew a higher law. His kingdom was not of this world, but he respected the temporal ruler, rulers and obeyed their laws. And an example of that from Mark 12, 17, this is the King James Version, and Jesus answering said unto them, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and God the things that are God's. So yes, we are on a spiritual journey. And it's important as on our spiritual journey to eliminate our material desires and recognize the divinity not only in ourselves but in everyone and align our actions with spiritual principles. This is what Jesus did. This is what he demonstrated. So as we have already affirmed, when I focus on the divinity in myself and others, I discover I belong wherever I am. So whether we're sitting here in this building, a group of like-minded people, or if we're out in the world, uh, surrounded by people who don't believe the same that we do, spiritually, religiously, politically, morally, whatever, we keep our focus on our divinity. That truth that we are a child of God. And we also keep that same thought for everyone that we encounter. They are also a child of God. They also have that spark of divinity within them as well. In her book, Lessons in Truth, H. Emily Cady wrote that we are all individual expressions of the divine. And Unity's principle number two states, human beings are created in the image of God and our very essence is divine. Therefore, we are inherently good. We all have that spark. We are created with that spark of the divine within us as God's image. And so we are good. Everyone has that. Everyone is born with that. If you haven't read Lessons in Truth and you're new to Unity, I recommend that as a great starter book. Uh, if you're not uni new to Unity, it's a good reminder of where Unity teachings came from. So, I have written here on my page paper, Katie says, read the second paragraph. <laughs> so in her book, um, another book that she wrote, it's called How I Use Truth. So she wrote this, the book Lessons in Truth, and then she has another group of stories on how she used those lessons in truth in her life. And she, but she starts off talking about, um, about Jesus. Oftentimes in the book she refers to him as the Nazarene. Um, but she talks about how in his life, in his ministry, he was always trying to convey to people that would listen to him that, that, God, was with, that God is within you. Je when Jesus would say, um, the Father is in me, and I am in the Father, um, he also meant that for us as well. Um, so, so God, the divine, it, is, it wasn't just him, you know. Um, Jesus wasn't any more special than you are. He just practiced it a lot and got really, really good at it, all right, of, of, of knowing that, that we are a part of this divine being. And she describes this uh, as a fountain. So if you picture uh, a, a, beautiful fount a beautiful fountain, the center of this fountain, uh, you have, you know, the water is, uh, it's, it's strong, it's moving, it's, 
uh, shooting up and, and out, and it's gorgeous. There's all this energy flowing, 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 flowing. Now, this is a big fountain, okay? And the farther out you get on the edges, the water starts to get really still. And it looks like, and it's like a pond, and it's stagnant. And that's where the scum grows, all right? Uh, so, she, so, so she explains that, that, and that's who we are. We have that spirit within us that is uh, bubbling through. It's flowing through us, flowing through us. And the farther we get away from it, we get more stagnant. And that's where the scum is on us. This is where we see ourselves as sick. We see ourselves as unworthy. We see ourselves as weak. When we see ourselves in that way, we are, oh, we are, we are away from that fountain. We are away from that, that flow of divine energy. So, when we are in that flow, this is when we see ourselves as whole, we see ourselves as healthy. This is where, within this area, this is when we manifest as well. I'm not going there today, but that's where it is. So, but how do we get there? It's like Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. How do you live within your center? your divine center, practice, practice, practice. Uh, throughout the New Testament and the stories of Jesus, he is constantly going off by himself. Going off by himself to pray, to commune with the divine. So this is how we do it as well. It's through prayer, it's through meditation, it's through being quiet, letting the world go away and focus within. So this is who we are. We are children of God. As Susan said in that beautiful meditation as well. And God is everywhere. God is in everything. It's that Christ light in each of us. And we when we focus in on that power, that source, and recognize that Christ light in everyone else, then we also see them as whole. In India and in Hinduism, they have a word, namaste, which basically means I bow to you. But it also, it also means that the divine self, the divine and self are the same in you, and in me. And here in unity, we say, I behold the Christ in you. We see that in, other, in, in everyone. And we hold that and hold them in that. The more we hold that truth about ourselves and hold that truth about other people, and when we're around other people, they will start to believe that about themselves as well. It's how you treat people. It's how you show up, how you allow God to show up as you. And we've been affirming that we belong wherever we are when we focus on our divinity and others. Well, how is that? Bear with me. Here's a thought that I have. Let's see if I can say, get this out. So, um, I'm kind of scratching the surface on this, and it's a big, broad stroke uh, it, within this thought. Um, there is um, a contemporary um, writer, speaker, philosopher, Ken Wilber. Uh, he has a, a, a theory, uh, integral theory, um, which is very complicated and has a lot of stuff in it. The one thing I want to focus on this is he talks about holons, and a holon, I have that definition, is something that is simultaneously a whole in itself as well as a part of a larger whole. Okay? So scientists have microscopes looked down upon everything and separated down to uh, an element called a quark. 
There may be something smaller at this point, but uh, a quark is one of the smallest particles of energy. A quark by itself is whole. It is complete. But when you add protons and neutrons and electrons, okay, then you become then you have an atom. An atom within itself is whole. It is complete. You put enough atoms together and you're going to get some cells. A single cell is whole within itself. It is complete, though it is made up of neutrons and protons and, and, and quarks and, and, and energy. And then cells. You put a bunch of cells together and you get everything there is. You get us. You get chairs. You get candles. You get chihuahuas. You get, you know... Everything contains cells. So it's a whole bunch of cells working together to create you. And you by yourself are whole and complete. And God expresses through you. You get two people together. Now you have two individuals that are whole and complete they come together, they are one. They together, they are whole and complete together. And together, they are an expression of the divine, and they react to the world as one. We, as a group in this room, a bunch of individuals, but we come together here, and we are one. We are one group here together expressing the Christ energy within each other. And I realized, I was thinking about this, and Ed and I were at dinner uh, last night, and we were in a restaurant, and I was like, oh, everybody here in this restaurant is one. We are one together serving as customers for <laughs> So, but we were a, a, a single group of people. So I mean, I'm going to go back for a second. I'm, I'm going to call this quark, uh, that little particle of energy. I'm going to call, I'm going to just be brave and just call that the spark of divinity. It's in everything. It is in everything. It's in the chair you're sitting in. It's in the air you breathe. So everything has that spark of divinity in it. So this is where we fit in. If you look at yourself as a, a puzzle piece, a puzzle piece by itself is still, it's, it's a whole piece. But it's a part of a bigger picture, and you can put it together. You can put three, three puzzle pieces together, and it's like, oh, this is, I have the face of the picture. It's a whole thing. And you put the whole thing together, and each of those tiny little pieces that look differently on the outside, come together and create one cohesive picture. So you drill down and you have that quark and you have the atoms and you have the cells and the molecules and you have the people and the dogs and the trees and the, and the flowers and the earth and the moon and the sun and the planets and the entire universe is one thing. This is where we fit in. If you think of your puzzle piece when you are in your center, your, your spiritual center, and you are that single puzzle piece, it's fluid because no matter where you go, you find your connection with that other piece that's there and find that you are connected and you are one. And you can work together for that purpose. to co-create, and to experience this thing that we called life. So I'm going to share an exercise. Does everybody have a mirror? I know this is scaring some of you. Everybody have a mirror? Yay. All right. Uh, so um, Ed has been leading a men's group um, uh, using the book um, Warrior Compassion. And one of the exercises, part of the homework 
that we have had to, that we have had to do that everybody all the, the guys that are in this group are doing one of the the homework pieces is every day look at yourself in the mirror for five minutes and see what you see I'll get you back Debbie all right so and to see what you see and maybe even see what you're hiding so everybody has a mirror I'm gonna have you look at yourself But, so when you look in there, what do you see? You see Todd. You're supposed to look at yourself, Maria. Yes, you and Todd are connected. You are one. But look at yourself. Look at your, look at your, look into your eyes. Look deep into your eyes. Look deep into your heart. What do you see? Who do you see? What you're looking at is the face of God. So I'm going to sing this song. Most of you in the room know this song. And you're going to sing it to yourself. You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God That's how it goes You are the face of God I hold you in my heart, you are a part of me, you are the face of God, keep singing to yourself, you are the face of God, I hold you in my heart, you are a part of me. the face of God. Now, you can put your mirror down. That'll make some of you happy. I want you to turn to somebody else, knowing that they have that spark of divinity just like you, and sing to them, you are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. Somebody else. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. Somebody new. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. One more. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. A part of me. You are the face of God. Back to your mirror. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of are the face of God, each of us. So just remember, I'm jumping back to part of Emily Cady's book that I just remembered that she said, because I think it's important to know, 
there were two parts to Jesus the person. There was the fleshy human part, the part that had doubts, the part that had feelings, the part that breathed and ate food and paid taxes. And then there was that spiritual truth, that center, from which he lived and taught. Each of us, there's two parts to our person. There's that fleshy human part. I would like to get rid of some of that fleshy part. (laughs) And there is that spiritual center, that fountain of source within us flowing through and as us. So you are a child of God and you belong. Namaste.